Happy, Happy National, National Day. Day. <laughs> okay, welcome to this week's News Dash, where two full-time realtors turn into part-time newscasters. Yeah. So it's a holiday today, but we are still working. Usually, uh, on the holidays, we are. It's where our busiest season and period is, right? Yeah, but I'm happy to be here in the studio. Yeah, so we're excited to share with you this week's news. So what do we have today, Lucas? So we have Altura EC that was launched together with another condo, which we'll go through later yes. over the weekend. And Altura EC did very well. Yeah, we saw 61% was sold on the launch day. That's crazy. Yes, launched by Ting Tian and Santali Realty. Yeah. Does this does this duo like ring a name ring a bell for you? Yeah, so Ting Tian Realty actually also sold um coastline residences. Yeah. Sorry, built coastline residences. Mm-hmm. Also Dairy Farm and Four at Bukit Timah, correct? Yes. Yes. So the Ting Tian Realty is on a roll. Yeah. But this particular duo actually mm. came together to launch tenant in Tampines as well. Yes. Another EC. Yes, and it was I just solely one. sold in July. Yes. Right. So Altura is going to be built at Bukit Bato, West Avenue 8. Mm. Right. And what's great for them is that ACS Primary is going to be moved within one kilometer of here. Yeah, it's so crazy that how people are actually buying houses so that they can plan for their kids. Yeah. So I'm actually selling this one place that's located within 1km from Nanyang Primary School and RGPS and the mm. demand there is so crazy. Yes. Yeah. Right. And what what's even better is that ACS Primary, by 2030, mm. they're going to be a co-ed school. So both boys and girls will be able to attend this school as well. Yeah, that's great news. And I think that would probably want, be one of the main reasons why everyone's looking in that specific area and that mm. specific condo. Yes. And yep. not a lot of ECs have been built in Bukit Bato. The last one was The Dew mm. back in 2001. Mm. So it's been quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another thing that we want to highlight here is the the pricing the yeah. PSF yeah. at 1433 PSF yeah so they sold at an average of 1433 PSF yeah. which is a record price yeah. for new ECs yes. understandable since around the area uh, I think they've been launching at 1006 1008 for the past two years now it's going to be higher the next condo we're going to be talking about is even higher and even though it's like yes. um, I wouldn't call Bui Batok Central mm. but the next one is even more not central yeah, because I mean, mm. if you're looking in terms of this pricing, this was the price of a condo about two, three years back. Yeah. And you can never, ever get this pricing anymore for a new launch condo in this current market. Mm. And ECs at this pricing is already at a record price, record-breaking yes. PSF. And of course, why ECs are so popular is because when it's launched, only Singaporeans can buy. So it yeah. cuts out your foreign competition. Correct. Right? Yeah. And of course, they are so at cheaper prices. And but you have your HDB restrictions. Yeah, so it's like a mm. pros and cons. You get your HDB grants yep. while being able to get a condo status. Yes. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a combination of both. Mm. Yeah. But just a reminder, you still are capped by your income, which is 16k, right? And uh you also can't take a HDB loan. Mm. You, know, you have to take a bank loan. Yeah. And you are subject to MSR calculation for your uh affordability instead of the TDs SR. So actually this caps and restricts a lot of how much uh, loan you can use for an EC. So mm-hmm. a lot of EC buyers are going to be fucking out of cash up front. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So that's it for the first one. Okay, next up, we have Lake Garden Residences. What do we have about this? Yes, so Lake Garden Residences uh, launched over the weekend as well mm-hmm. and uh, not didn't perform as well as Altura, understandably. And 23% sold. At an average of 2,120 PSF. Yes. Mm. So earlier, Altura, we, was, we were seeing 1,433 on average uh, in terms of transactions. But over here, we have 2,120 on average. And where is this at? This is in Jurong area. And not like the popular Jurong East area where all the shopping malls are at. Yeah. But this is at Yuan Ching Road. Yeah, so this is actually located mm. in OCR. And so we are seeing that OCR is already transacting at this PSF. Yeah. Okay, so out of the 71 units, what are the profile of buyers that we see here? Yeah, so we're looking at 73% Singaporeans mm. and 25% PRs mm. and 1%, no, 2%. International buyer. International buyer, which is like that one buyer. Yeah. <laughs> one so buyer we are still seeing that the majority of demand are still in uh, Singaporean and Singapore PRs. Mm. Not as much in terms of international buyers, also probably because of the location. Yes. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of the buyers uh, of uh, Lake Garden Residences actually mm. are already like families and upgraders yes. from the Jurong area. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So we see mm. that, you know, a lot of the condos in this area are mostly upgraders from surrounding HDBs. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe uh, those who are living in two bedrooms and want to upgrade to a three bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And of course, 
true to its name, Lake Garden Residences is going to a- uh, enjoy a very good Unblock view. view. Unblock view, yes, of the <laughs> Jurong Lake district. Yes, which is going to be, uh, in the years to come, you're going to see a lot of transformation around this area. Yeah, very mm. exciting in terms of that area. Yeah. Yeah, in the next five years. Yes. Yeah. Okay, next up, the property resale market is stabilizing. Yes. So, a study done by Property Guru, mm. right, they didn't take statistics from the market itself but actually from the website and of course property guru is the major website where everyone goes to look for properties yeah, yeah. so actually last week uh, grace and i were analyzing the reports from q1 versus q2 mm-hmm. and we do see that the resale pricing is uh, stabilizing as compared to last year yep. where the growth was quite significant Mm. And this one of the reasons for this is because um in co- in the second quarter and second half of this year, more supply is coming into the market for both private condos as well mm. as HDB. Yes. So over here we see that you know the HDB market resale prices or um demand has dropped quite a bit uh by six point four percent in second quarter. Yeah. And so we see that this is because in the second half of this year, majority of the buyers are turning to the BTO market. Yes, that's right. So yes. uh, what Property Guru did was they analyzed 600,000 of their listings yes. right, and analyzed the, the activity that's going on within all these listings yeah. and they found that, yeah, of course, like you mentioned, the decline in 6.4%. Yeah, so the gap CD. between mm. the buyer and seller's expectations are now narrowing compared to the past one year. Yes, yeah. which is great. Yeah. And even better news... So what do we have here? Yeah. So even better news is that government is looking at measures to keep HDB flats affordable. Which has always been the case, right? For HDBs. That's right. And uh, maybe hmm, news, just to take, I wouldn't say good news or bad news, but just news to take note of for HDB owners or people who are looking to buy HDB, Mm -hmm. right? Because uh, PM Lee, Mm -hmm. in his National Day speech today, Yes. Right? He mentioned that he's they are going to adjust the CPS scheme and HDB schemes yeah, to keep HDB affordable for yeah. Singaporeans, right? Yeah, but I see here that it's targeted more towards seniors mm. facing insufficient CPF. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, the changes are aimed to help and provide the seniors who have insufficient CPF, like you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So details, more details will be adjusted on the uh, will be announced during the National Day yeah. Rally. So on we can August probably talk 20th. about this in more detail next week after yes. it's up. But I, I think what was very interesting is yeah. where he was recording yeah. <laughs> this National Day message. <laughs> he was announcing the affordability of HDBs <laughs> at Sky Oasis at Dawson, <laughs> which is a famous area known because right next door, Sky Terrace at Dawson, so a five-room flat for 1.4 million. Yes. <laughs> Talking about affordability for HDBs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On point. So yeah, we're going to be excited to see what we have. Yeah, so uh, stay tuned on 20th of August for the National Day Rally mm-hmm. speech. Yeah. Okay. And the next, more history. Rent. How's the rental market like? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Chao Chu Kang. <laughs> Chao Chu Kang HDB flat rents at $6,600. Yeah, who would have thought, right? Yes. Yeah, so, but last week again, Grace and I were talking about HDB and mm. private rental. And we were saying, you know, private rental is so expensive right now that, because yeah. um, actually HDB prices for rental has also increased. Mm. And we are seeing that this is also because um, for condo market, because it's so expensive, people are turning to HDB for a more affordable option. Yes. Because 6600 if you're looking at condo market, you can probably only get like a very compact three-bedroom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would say maybe 1200 square feet. Yeah. But mm. over here, we are seeing that the reason why they're okay to pay for this is because it's a manzanet. Yes. How did I say that? Mentionet. 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 Yes. Yeah. It was uh, least for six thousand six hundred. It's not recent. I wouldn't say it's recent. Uh, mm. because this was actually back in May, but mm. the the data was just brought to light like uh, this week. Recently. Yes. Yeah. So, of course, six thousand six hundred for HDB. People, wow, people were thinking, wow, so expensive, right? Yeah. But chill because actually it's a very big mention it yes. even for for mention it standard for for mention it standards is yeah, big. yeah and it's, it's two mm. floors right yes and it's 2314 square feet yeah, yeah. so that would so be uh, that's two four room. yeah that's a two that's two four room flats if yeah. you're looking at the new condos yeah otherwise it's probably like a four to five bedroom unit mm, yeah yes. flat yeah, uh, yeah four to five bedroom unit. but of course you're not gonna get like six bedrooms <laughs> yeah. you're, still, you're still restricted to like three or four bedrooms yeah but it's almost like mm-hmm. a landed yes yeah like a landed size 
Wow, I was renting landed Compared for five thousand dollars like, two <laughs> yeah. years ago. Ah, right? yeah. uh, how far we have come. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But yeah. hopefully in the next one year with more supplies of condos and you know okay. um more MOP units coming up, we, are, we would see a stabilization of rental market. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to name names, but whoever did this analysis for this um, news report, right? Very interesting because they said, oh, uh, the price was due to its locality near UT MRT station. <laughs> and six to eight minute walk. A six to eight minute walk is not near. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Singaporeans are very spoiled because six to eight minutes, if you're overseas, is actually very convenient. In Singapore, if you're not across MRT station, you're already considered inconvenient. Yeah, I mean, eight minutes away, people say, ah, oh, where got near? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> Even one to two bus stops, actually, if you're, if you're living overseas, mm -hmm. it's considered very convenient. But in Singapore, you are it's considered you don't have any MRT nearby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I must say, probably, I wouldn't say it's the location. Like, I mean, UT, MRT, UT area is not a popular area for yeah. rental, yeah. right? Not famously mm -hmm. popular. And I'm surprised that Chao Chu Kang came out as the record price for HDB. Rental. rental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I must say that the unit is very nice. Very yeah. nicely furnished. Very nicely done. Up. Yeah. yeah. So uh, don't think that just because you're in Chachukang, right, you can yeah. also rent at the same price. Yeah. It's a big unit. Nicely furnished. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. a pros mm. for nicely furnished units. Even for yes. condos, usually nicely furnished, fully furnished, just nicely done up, can mm. actually command a higher price as compared to sometimes uh, something that's vacant. Yeah. So it's, it depends also on the preferences of the tenants. Mm. Who yeah. do you think are the type of tenants that well, are willing to pay for a large HDB flat and over $6,000? Usually would be uh, larger families, not just a family of five, mm. but probably someone who's actually living with their grandparents also. Yeah. So like three generations. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I do think there could be a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. Where condo owners are actually... Uh, moving in, in transition between their condos. Yeah. Right? And they need a big place to put all their stuff. Yes. Or maybe a landed owner waiting for a condo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's all the news we have for yeah, you Yeah, so that's what we have for you this week. Mm. Happy National Day. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Happy National Bye. Day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> <Don't> help me. <laughs>